Hello everyone and welcome to the week 6 for our core systems integration and architecture. This week we will focus on our topic about integration methodologies. By the time that you're watching this video, I hope that you are all safe and healthy. So let's start with our discussion. In order to come up with a more feasible solution when dealing with business systems or application integration projects, it is critical to follow appropriate processes and procedures. Students will apply their working knowledge of method level, data level, application interface level, and user interface level enterprise application integration or EAI in this course to propose a high-level approach or methodology that can be applied to most enterprise application integration projects. For this lesson, here are our objectives. At the end of the lesson, you must be able to identify the 12 steps in application integration, construct understanding on how the different steps in application integration relates from one another, and construct realization on how one must conduct a practical yet effective system integration activity. Several techniques and actions must be completed and considered in EAI. Organizations have used many processes and procedures over time, and the following are the most typical actions according to Lintikun in 1999. So here are the 12 steps in application integration. First, understanding the enterprise and problem domain. Second, making sense of the data. Third, making sense of the processes. Fourth, identifying application interfaces. Fifth, identifying the business events. The sixth step, identifying the schema and content transformation scenarios. Seventh, mapping information movement. Eighth, applying technology. Ninth, testing, testing, and testing. The tenth step, considering performance. Number 11, defining the value. And last, creating maintenance procedures. For this lesson, we're going to discuss and understand the 12 steps in application integration. Let's start with the first step, understanding the enterprise and problem domain. This is the most difficult, time-consuming, and the necessary step in the procedure. The issue domain must be examined both independently and within the context of the company. In order to fully comprehend the issues, organization chiefs or head must be involved in order to have a complete knowledge of the context and structure of the different information systems as well as the company's business requirements. The fundamental requirements collecting techniques are used to determine the issue in this approach. It necessitates interacting with people, with paper, and systems in order to gather the information needed to accurately describe the EAI problem so that it may be studied, modeled, and refined. After that, and only then can the proper solution be used. So the quality of information at this stage influences the future steps and has a significant impact on the total quality of the output. The second step is making sense of the data. Data must be the starting point for everything. Typically, EAI initiatives are simply data-driven. The fact alone warrants the effort to figure out what's in the many databases spread around an organization. Another point to consider is that databases must be understood even if the EAI project is focused on methods, on application interfaces, and user interfaces. Finally, identifying where data exists, obtaining information about the data like your schema information, and using business principles to determine which data goes where and why is the key to implementing data level EAI. So the three basic steps for implementing data level EAI includes identifying the data, 
cataloging the data and building the enterprise metadata model. As you can see in the figure, it represents the three basic steps for implementing data level EAI. The third step is making sense of the processes. Following the understanding of enterprise data and the creation of baseline information, such as the enterprise metadata model, a choice must be taken on how to approach the enterprise business model. This choice will be made based on how this specific EAI issue domain is addressed. This is an enterprise perspective at the process or method level comprehending and documenting all business processes and how they connect to one another as well as the enterprise metadata model. Traditional processing or process rather, process modeling approaches such as object modeling like unified modeling language should be used to design business processes just as they should be used to create database analytical procedures. Rather than starting from scratch with a set of application requirements, it is preferable, preferable rather to describe current business processes and methods in order to better understand what they do and, as a result, how to combine them at the method level through a composite application. The fourth step in application integration is identifying application interfaces. It's vital to identify the available application interfaces in support of application interface level EAI. With application interfaces and other EAI levels, in addition to looking for common methods and data to integrate. The user interfaces are peculiar. They differ significantly from one another, from one application to the next. Furthermore, many interfaces aren't truly interfacing at all, despite what program sellers or developers may assert. It's critical to spend time testing assumptions regarding interfaces. So the establishment of an application interface directory is the ideal place to start with interfaces. This is a repository for accumulated information on accessible interfaces as well as documentation for each interface similar to other folders. This directory is used to comprehend the sites of integration throughout all systems in the EAI problem domain together with the shared business model and the enterprise metadata model. After identifying the application interfaces, we need to identify the business events. This is the fifth step in application integration. So the next stage is to identify all important business events that take place within a company. This means that whenever anything happens, an event, there is a reaction. An event is something like a customer signing up for credit at an online web store. It may be useful to record this occurrence and use it to trigger anything else such as credit check to ensure that the customer or the consumer is credit worthy. Of course, this can set off a chain of actions at the credit bureau, such as the credit bureau returning the client's credit status, which can set off even further events such as alerting the customer by email if the credit application is approved or refused. These events are usually asynchronous, although in rare cases, they can be synchronous. It's critical to comprehend what trigger a business event what happens during the event, and any subsequent effects or events rather that may occur as a result of the first event. The ultimate outcome is a network of interconnected occurrences, each of which is reliant on the pre previous. So that is the step in identifying the business events. The sixth step is identifying the schema and content transformation scenario. It's a good idea to obtain a concept of how schema and content of data traveling across systems will be altered if you have a strong grasp of the data and application semantics that exist inside an EAI issue domain. First, data from one system will not make sense in another unless 
the data schema and contents are reformatted to fit the target system's needs. Second, it will ensure that application semantics are consistent from system to system. So these are the things that you need to understand when identifying the schema and content transformation scenarios. The seventh step is mapping information movement. So after the preceding stages have disclosed all of the information accessible, it's time to map the information movement from system to system, identifying which data element or interface the information is traveling from and where it will eventually go. For example, the customer number from the sales databases must be sent to the credit reporting system where it will eventually be stored in the credit system's customer table. So this knowledge allows the team to chart the flow of information from the source systems, sales systems, credit systems, and target systems. It's important to notice where the data is physically stored, what security measures are in place, what supporting technology is in place like relational tables, and how data is removed on one side and deposited on the other side. It's also important to keep track of the event that link to the information flow. What are the additional criteria such as the time, the real time, uh, the state applying technology is the eighth step in application integration. Selecting the proper technology to solve the problem may be a challenging yet a fun task. Application servers, distributed objects, and message brokers are just a few of the technologies accessible. So, the technology chosen will most likely be a mix of technologies and suppliers that, when combined, satisfy the EAI solutions requirements. It is extremely uncommon for a single seller to be able to address all the problems. Not that this has ever stopped merchants from claiming to be able to do so. So technology selection is a challenging task that takes a significant amount of time and effort. Developing technology and product criteria, comprehending accessible solutions, and then matching the requirements to those goods is no easy task. This marriage of requirements and goods frequently necessitates a trial study to demonstrate that the technology will work. The time it takes to choose the proper technology might take as long as the EAI solution is created. While this may appear overwhelming, consider the alternative. Selecting the incorrect technology for the task at hand. A poor decision almost guarantees the EAI project's failure. The ninth step is testing, testing, and testing. Testing is actually time-consuming and costly. Testing is also thankless, which makes it even more appealing task. Still, if an EAI solution isn't thoroughly tested, tragedy is a distinct possibility. Important data, for example, can be erased and might lost. Worse still, incorrect information may suffer within applications. Even if none of these catastrophic scenarios occur, the solution must be scalable and capable of handling the additional rigors of day-to-day -day use. A test strategy will need to be put in place to ensure thorough testing because, you know, testing an EAI solution is challenging. A test strategy is very necessary. The majority of source and target systems are mission critical. Hence, it cannot be shut down. As a result, evaluating these systems might be difficult. For the 10th step in application integration, we need to consider performance. Too frequently, performance is overlooked until it is too late. Like one piece of advice, don't overlook performance. EAI systems that aren't up to par are doomed to fail. If, for example, completing a credit report for a telephone client takes 20 minutes during peak hours, the solution isn't worth it. 
While most solutions won't achieve zero latency with today's technology, the flow of data across systems or the execution of common business processes should be achieved should achieve reaction times of less than a second. Furthermore, the solution should maintain the same response time as the user and processing load grows. In a nutshell, the EAI solution will grow. To build performance into a system, it is necessary to design for and test for it before going live. Remember that after the solution has been installed, performance cannot be improved. From the ground up, performance must be planned. This means that the solution's design must include both performance infrastructure and the chosen enabling technology. Traditional performance models such as those established over the years in the field of distributed computing can be used to make certain modifications before the solution is implemented. Finally, certain performance tests must be conducted to confirm that the system works properly under a range of situations. For example, how well does it perform at users 100, like 100 users, 500 users, or even thousands of users? We need to consider that and we need to come up with necessary processes and activities in order to achieve the level of quality we are expecting considering the performance of the solution we employ. For the 11th step, we need to define the value. Two factors must be considered when determining value, soft and hard money. Simply said, hard money represents the value of the EAI solution as defined by its capacity to reduce costly operations such as automating manual procedures, lowering mistake rates, or processing client orders more rapidly. On the other hand, soft money is more difficult to describe. Improve productivity over time, increase retention rate owing to the capacity to make systems operate together for users, and increase customer satisfaction based on ease of use with an organization with integrated systems are all examples of cost saving. Defining value is a system in a system may, of course, be based on any criterion and will vary from issue domain to problem domain and from business to business. So that is the 11th step in application integration. The last step in application integration is creating maintenance procedures. It is important to think about how an EAI system will be maintained in the long run. Who is going to be in charge for the message broker server? Who will be in charge of the security? who will keep track of the system performance and troubleshoot issues. These are the things that we need to consider when creating maintenance procedures. When dealing with the requirements for continuous maintenance, it is a good idea to list all of the tasks that must be completed and assigned individuals to complete them. Remember that an EAI solution is the beating heart of an organization, transporting crucial data between mission-critical systems. As a result, it is a potential point of failure that may bring the company to its knees. With that pleasant idea in mind, now could be a time to think about disaster recovery problems like redundant servers and networks, as well as the possibility of moving the EAI system in the event of the disaster. So here's the things that we need to consider when creating maintenance procedure. In summary, for this lesson, we were able to identify the 12 steps in application integration and the things that we need to understand in each step when we conduct application integration. We recall that the steps are the following, understanding the enterprise and problem domain, making sense of the data, making sense of the processes, identifying application interfaces, identifying the business events, identifying the schema and content transformation scenarios, mapping information movement, applying technology, testing, testing, and testing, considering performance, defining the value, and creating maintenance procedures. That ends our week 6 for our core systems integration and architecture focusing on the integration methodologies. I hope we learned something in the presentation. Take care always and keep yourselves healthy. Thank you for watching.